Good morning. Welcome to the podcast party. I am Sharina Titwell Watson, your empowerment producer. Of course, my job is to help you tap into the power within within you and help you push past your pain, push past your problems, push through the process, help you to love unconditionally. My job is also to help you push you right into your purpose. Understanding the seasons of life that you go through is for a for you to learn a lesson, not for us to continue to go through the same cycles. So I am here to help you this morning and I hope that you are excited and ready. Um, what we're going to do is actually invite some folks. Good morning. Good morning, Kiyosha. Kiki, hey, good morning. So what I'm doing this morning is inviting folks. Of course, from 730 to 735, we have the opportunity to impact lives of somebody else, help somebody else by sharing and telling somebody somewhere. So go to your invite list, invite somebody. I invite people every day. Do your part. All you can do is your part. Invite, invite, invite. So we're going to be talking about this morning, um, just being aware. Beware. We normally know, you know, the, the, the enemy's tactics and how he's going to come at us. However, sometimes he comes at us at ways that we are not expecting. So it kind of throw us off. But if we make ourselves aware, then we can be ready. Life still will happen, but at least you are ready. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Come on, somebody somewhere. So go ahead to your friends list and invite a few good folks that you think will benefit from the podcast party. At the podcast party, we share the living water. We share the bread of life. We have enough seats for everybody. We have the best pilot in the world. Come on and get on flight. Everybody said, I'm taking flight 2021. I'm taking flight 2021. So our goal is to help you not have to take flight, the same flight in 2022. So get on. We is flying. We are soaring in the air now. But we have to make sure that we are aware of what's taking place around us so we won't get thrown off and be on the same flight again in 2022. We're going to take a private jet in 2022. So if you have not been able to listen to the podcast, go over to my YouTube channel. They are all there preparing you for 2021, um, making sure that you are safe for 2021, leaving all the baggage in 2021. 20 um so you won't get on this flight with that stuff but today we are talking about being aware making sure that you're not shocked or um thrown off by the enemy's tactics good morning welcome to the podcast party i am sharina tidwell watson your empowerment producer and i am excited to share So what I'm doing right now is inviting people from my friends list so that we can impact the masses together. Good morning. Good morning. We'll get started at exactly 735. And as you're inviting, make sure that um, if you're sharing or telling somebody somewhere, just make sure you tag me in so that way I can go on there and post as well. But tell somebody somewhere. Also, search your heart, search your mind, make sure that your um, heart is open, ready to receive, and that you're ready to renew your mind. I know we get tired of living the same cycles, going through the same stuff over and over and over again. So the goal is for us to walk together in 2021 so we can move forward in life and we can get on this private jet together. Come on, somebody somewhere. Good morning, good morning. One more minute. Invite some folks. Don't be selfish and keep it all to yourself. We want to help everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right, it is now 7.35. 
And we're going to go ahead and get this party started. Good morning, TJ. Good morning, Miss Hinton. Good morning, Aunt Robin. T, I see some other folks, but I can't scroll all the way up. So this morning, we're going to talk about just being aware, just knowing, like, we know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know, you know, some of his tactics, the ones that we can actually see and we hear about. But what about the ones we don't know about and the strategic way he try to come at us and get us, you know, get us off track? We have to be aware of those things. So we're going to um, talk about those this morning. So while we're on this flight, before we get off, anything that happens along the way or when we get off this particular flight and get ready for 2022, we are already aware. So when the enemy comes, it's like you already tried that. I'm aware and I know how to respond rather than react. So the goal is to res- respond um, by faith and not react in fear. So we're going to read um, oh yeah, Isaiah 54, 17. Of course, we all know. Um, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Father God, we come to you this morning just thanking you for being God. Thank you for being in our lives. Thanking you for helping us along the way when we did not know what to do. You were there to help us, Lord God. Thank you for walking alongside us, Lord. You say you would never leave us nor forsake us. Some of us don't know how we made it this far, Lord God. And sometimes I look back and like, I wish I would have had a relationship with you a long time ago. However, I'm grateful for the relationship that we have now, Lord God. We are thankful that you are in our lives now and that we know more about you, Lord God. We ask right now that our um, minds are renewed, our hearts are open to receive, Lord God, and that we are prepared, Lord, when the weapons form. You told us that they will not prosper, but they will form and we need to be prepared. So when they form, Lord God, not only the ones that we can see with our natural eye, but the ones that form in the um, spirit, Lord God, we need to be aware of those, Lord God, so that we will know how to respond and not react in fear, Lord God. So we thank you right now, Lord God, that that we are that we are learning how to be better, Lord God. That we are um, going to stay equipped in 2021, Lord God, and that the enemy won't use those same tactics to keep us going through the same cycles over and over and over again, Lord God. We want to get ahead, Lord God. We want to move forward, Lord God. We need your help. We need you now, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, for your word, Lord. You give us everything we need in your word, Lord God. You created us with everything that we need, Lord God, and you told us exactly what would take place, Lord God. So I thank you that we spend this time together, Lord God, so that we can be um, we can get, we can become knowledgeable, Lord God, and we can apply that knowledge, Lord God, and have wisdom, Lord God, to be able to help somebody else. So we thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you for keeping us this far. We thank you for keeping us even further, Lord God, as we continue to take this journey called life, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we will not react and run in fear, Lord God, but we will respond in faith because we trust you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done, all that you plan to do, Lord God, and that you use us as healthy vessels on this side of heaven to impact your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, yes, what we want to talk about today, um, so we are aware of the different things that take place um in our lives and the enemy can try to get us off when it comes to our children, our family, our finances, our jobs and things like that. But do we really understand what's really taking place behind all those things that happen? So what I've learned a few years ago was um, when somebody comes up against me or when my bank account is not right or when something is happening, it's not really that thing that I should focus on. It is the spirit behind that thing. And when I started thinking about it like that, I no longer try to have an argument with my you know, my husband or my friends or my family. And, then, and I'm, I'm looking at them, but I see the enemy behind that trying to get me off or trying to get us off or put us in shambles and, and make us all upset, take our peace, our joy and our happiness. And when I realize that I'm not fighting in the flesh, in the natural, like I'm able to be at peace because I know what the enemy is trying to do. So when you are aware of the enemy's tactics and what he's trying to do to get you off, you won't respond or react the same. 
you won't respond or react the same. So if you're just think about it, if you're having a good day and something happens, whether it's a phone call or somebody says something or does something, why is that? Like, how did they change your whole temperature? How did they change your thermostat that quick? The enemy knows what works for you. He knows what works for each one of us. And Jonathan McReynolds says it in a song like the enemy learns from our mistakes, but do we learn from our mistakes? So what are you learning when those things happen and somebody's able to get you off that quick? Um, I talked about it a few podcasts ago, like you can go to church or you can go to an event or you can be in a high spirited, um, you know, event or gathering. And it's like while you're there, it's like, oh, my God, that was so good. Like, I feel so good. You know, I'm upbeat. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to clean up. I'm ready to just be positive. And then just like that, before you can even get to the stoplight, before you can get in your car good, a text, a call, road rage, something happens and snatches that experience right from you. And immediately you change from being excited and high spirited to just being down and, you know, just dark and dim and then negative or mad or whatever. The enemy knows exactly what to do to get you off. So you have to be where you have to be aware of what what could possibly happen to take my focus off of God's plan to take my focus off of what just took place that put me in a good spot you can't allow the enemy to come in and just snatch that from you but if you're not aware then the enemy can just do whatever he want to do he can use you as a rag doll and and just push you from left to right, up, down, just push you all over the place if you are not aware. So we have to make a decision today that I am going to be aware of what's happening around me, to me, you know, in life and whatever, and make a decision that the enemy will not, the enemy will not gain nothing. The enemy will get no joy out of my life. So sometimes you have, what you sometimes have to do is just get by yourself, get real still. Like people say, you know, you've been quiet for a couple hours trying to get me together. So I won't say nothing crazy. So I won't do nothing crazy. Talk to God, spend time with some music and just be, be by myself. So that I won't be that stumbling block or that dark cloud for other people. So I have to just get by myself, get myself together, me and Jesus and get right. Because I know what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to throw me off my path to success he's trying to throw me off my journey he's trying to get me in a dark place he's trying to get me depressed he's trying to get me stressed and for money money will do it for a lot of people when you look at your bank account and it says negative or look at your bank account and somebody that took something out your account or the the amount that was supposed to be there is not there immediately people go crazy when it's about their money but just think I, I, I challenge you to stay calm make a few phone calls to the bank or do what you need to do and keep it moving because you can act that way when you know God is your source. When you really know that God is your source, you already know, like, this is the enemy. So when stuff happens, already the enemy trying to get me off. Let me do what I can. And I, when I call to get things taken care of, I'm real professional. When I call to get things done, I, I show Jesus. Because they that's what the enemy wants you to do. You have to make the enemy out a liar. I know we say the devil is a liar. And a lot of people, you know, when I grew up, a lot of cliches, the devil is a liar. The devil is whatever. No, you have to make it up. Like, devil, whatever. I'm not concerned about that right now. I know it's going to be taken care of. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to do what I can that, that with, within my control. And I'm going to keep it moving because we have to do something. We can't just wait on God to do everything. We have to do something. So do what you can. Give it to God. Pray about it and keep it moving. Don't let the enemy get you off. So you have to be aware. So on a flight, we was, I was talking about taking flights. So on a flight, when you are aware of what may happen, you are not scared. You're not shook up. You're not afraid. So if you're on a flight and it starts shaking, you have already been, you know, forewarned. Like there may be some turbulence on the flight. Okay, so when it starts shaking, whatever, you're like, okay, let me let me get tight. Let me get right. On a flight, when you're going through the clouds, you know, it may be some shaking, some rocking. You are aware of that. What you are not familiar with is... Have you know you know you are aware of this oxygen mask, you're aware of the life vest, but you may have never had to use it. But you are equipped and ready to use it if you have to. You are aware of where all the exits are. If you're not feeling well on the plane, you know you can call the um flight attendant and they'll get you what you need. But some of those things have not actually happened. 
but you are aware of what you need if it does happen. So in our life, some of the weapons that we that are formed in our life, again, are um, health, um, finances, um, depression, brokenness, hurt, darkness, things like that. But what we are not aware of is the enemy's tactics that are taking place behind that. And if you are aware of that in advance, then you can prepare yourself accordingly to respond in faith, not in fear. So when they say spiritual warfare, that may be something that go, that's going on in your mind mentally that you have never experienced in your life. What do you do in times like that when it's late at night, it's just you and you just feel like, oh my God, I can't get myself together. You're having crazy thoughts, you're having suicidal thoughts, or you're having, you know, you just can't get it together mentally. What do you do? Sometimes we can't do anything. It's like, oh my God, I can't do anything. We don't know, we can't bring the words. In. I challenge you to just say Jesus. Say Jesus. Lord, keep me in my right mind. Jesus, just keep saying Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Keep me in my right mind. Sometimes when we can't do anything, open up your mouth and just say Jesus. You have to do something. You have to say something. Lord, keep me in my right mind. Cut on some gospel music. Read the word. Pray. Open up your mouth. Do something. When you feel paralyzed and you can't do anything, say Jesus. Say, you have to say it. You can't say it in your mind because everything else is going on in your mind. So you saying Jesus in your mind is not just going to cut it by itself. Open up your mouth and say, Jesus, do something, say something. Don't allow the enemy to just beat you up. So yeah, when it comes to your bank account, it's like, oh, I know what to do. You know, I know to call the bank and I know how to do this and I know how to do. Yeah. But when late in the midnight hour, they said, God will turn it around. He'll work in your favor. Y'all, we got to do something, though. You got to do something. So what are you doing when you're attacked in the spirit? So you know what to do when you're attacked in, by, in the flesh. I don't feel good. Let me take some medicine. Let me go to the doctor. Let me, you know, let me do what I can do. My bank account jacked up. Let me call the bank. Let me see who did X, Y, Z. You know, I'm feeling some type of way I can handle, you know, myself. But when you're attacked in the spirit, how do you fight? How do you fight? You can't fight the you can't fight the spirit with the flesh. Well, how, how are you fighting in the spirit? And you can't just lay there and not do nothing or say nothing. So I want y'all to be prepared in 2021, not only for the weapons that we see that are formed, but I want you to be prepared for the weapons that you may not see with the natural eye. So we have to use our supernatural eyes. So when you're attacked in the spirit, you must do something. You must say something. It's not, it's not the flesh that we're fighting against. It's the spirit. The enemy knows your plans. He knows the plans. He knows that you, you what's going what's gonna to throw you off, off course. So what is it that the enemy has learned to do what to do to get you off? That you are not learning from your own mistakes. So let's not react the same. Let's not react in fear. If you're standing, just imagine you're standing straight up and a weapon is coming towards you. And God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So you see the weapon plain as day. It's coming right at you. And you really, really trust that God is walking alongside of you. And you trust that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He didn't tell you that the weapon would not form. He did not tell you that the weapon would not prosper. I mean, would not form. No, he told you that a weapon was going to come. He told you that it was going to form. But he also told you that it shall not prosper. Are you going to stand and speak and say something and do something? Or are you going to duck, tuck tail and run in fear and have to face that same weapon again? Stand. If you can do nothing else, stand. Stand. The weapon is going to form. It's okay. It will not prosper. What are you saying, though? What are you saying? We talked about it yesterday. What are you spending time with? What are you spending time with? If you're spending time with the flesh, then you're going to react in the flesh. If you spend time in the spirit, you're going to react in the spirit. So I say respond by faith. You know what, God? I trust you. You know what, God? I trust you. It talks about putting on the full armor of God. 
You walking out here bare feet in the spirit. Have you faced God before you face the world? You can't go out here naked. You put on the breastplate, the helmet. What what are you going out here? Are you equipped? Are you ready for whatever comes your way? And when you when stuff happens, yeah, we are human. So when life happens, it's kind of like, oh my good. My first reaction is, all right, Jesus, come through. I need you to come through, Lord. I know you're a bad dude. I need you to come. I know you're a good man. Come on through for me, Jesus. I need you. I can't do this by myself. And they don't want Rini from Cheryl to respond. So I try, you know, Jesus, come on. Because people look at, oh, I thought you was, a, I thought you was a Christian. As I tell people all the time, save don't mean soft. Save don't mean soft. You're not going to just do me any kind of way and think you're, mm-mm. I'm going to get Jesus on you. I'm going to get Jesus on you. I'm going to do what I can, and I'm going to get Jesus on you. Because you don't really want me to respond. So, y'all, we have to understand how to fight in the spirit and stop fighting these people in the flesh. It's not worth it. Don't fight in the flesh. You also have to think about your life. As we grow, we change. As we grow, we change. So, based on what's happening in your life, the same cycles that's taking place in your life, have you changed your protocol so that you are prepared to face the weapons that form? So it may have been friendships a long long time ago. Friendships may not be what's getting you off anymore. Now that you've grown, you know who's in your circle, you know who your friends are, so certain things don't get you off. You know, name brand clothes or people having certain things, that don't get you off no more. So now what is the enemy trying to use to get you off? Have you changed your protocol? Do you know how to respond to what's, what the enemy tactics are now? So on flight 2021, we want to make sure that we are equipped, that we are prepared, that we are knowledgeable, and that we're using the wisdom so that we can respond by faith and not react in fear when the weapons are formed against us. So yesterday we also talked about Freeing yourself from yourself. So you know how to be free from yourself. Mm -hmm. Free from people. That's great. All that is great. You left the old baggage in 2020. That's great. But when when you're fighting in the spirit, that's a whole nother ball game. That's a whole nother ball. And it usually gets you right by yourself. Late in the midnight hour. Right by yourself. What are you doing when that stuff happens? Are you responding the same as you would respond in 2020? Are you responding in the flesh? I want you, I want us, I want us to impact people together. I want us to be like flawless together. But how do we do that? How do we do that? We have to be aware. We have to gain awareness. We have to understand. We have to know better. And we have to apply what we know. That is wisdom. And that way we can go out and help somebody else. So please understand that the weapons will form against us. But they will not prosper. Um, This is where we are. The armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of where we are, the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Y'all, we're going out here naked. We're going out here unprepared. We're going out here unprepared. The helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. How many of us know what the, what the word says? 
Some of us don't know who we are because we don't know what God said about us. How many of us are using our sword? How many of us are using the word of God? How many of us got on the helmet of salvation? Mentally, we got to be prepared mentally. It, a lot of things start in the mind. What are we saying about ourselves? What are we saying about our situations? What are we saying out of our mouths about certain things? You know, when you life and death is in the power of your tongue. So if you think about it, think about people that you know that walk around all the time. Say, I'm so tired. Oh, my feet hurt. Oh, people that talk negative and always a part of drama and just have a dark cloud. Of, look at their lives. You have what you say. Even when you don't feel your best, say something positive. How you feeling today? I'm alive and well. I'm absolutely amazing. How are you? I am great. How are you? Even when you don't feel like it, speak it. You got to see it before you see it. Speak it. It starts in the mind. If you keep telling yourself, I'm broke. I tell people, don't say you broke around me. You're not broke. You're in between blessings or you're waiting on your manifestation. We are not broke because God is our source and he is not broke. If you really believe God is your source, you are never broke. You may not have a million dollars in your bank account. You may not have a thousand or a hundred, but you are not broke. You are wealthy in health. You are wealthy in finances. You are wealthy in your, in your professional life. You are wealthy in every aspect of your life. You have what you say. What are you saying? What are you saying? In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Do you have your shield of faith? Your shield of faith extinguishes all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Your faith. You know what? This look real crazy right now. But I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. What am I supposed to learn in this crazy looking situation? Mm. When it look crazy and when it don't look like it's, uh, I'm like, what lesson am I supposed to learn in this season? So that I won't keep going through the same cycles. What lesson am I supposed to learn? I'm either supposed to learn a lesson, something is supposed to happen in this, this this season. I'm looking for it. I'm expecting something. A lesson, um, a blessing. I'm looking, I'm expecting something. But when when it does, when it looks crazy, I know that God is setting up something. He's preparing something. A lot of us get get thrown off by social media. We see all this crazy stuff going on on social media, on TV, on the news, what our friends are talking about. With, you cannot get caught up in that. You cannot get caught up in that. When I see stuff, I'm like, I'm praying. I'm praying for, praying as I'm scrolling, com- commenting positive if I'm scrolling, whatever. I'm when I get on social media, it's like real quick for a purpose. Let me post something. Let me see what my homies doing. Let me see what friends doing. My classmates stuff like, and I'm praying. I'm not getting caught up in what everybody else is doing and going to somebody else's page and all this. Listen, don't give social media all your time and energy. You're going to get caught up and you're going to always be sad, depressed, upset about something. Come on, y'all. We got to do better. We got to do better in 2021. Verse 15 says, and with your feet, fit it with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. With your feet, fit it with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. You ready? You ready to do something? Your feet ready? Your feet got to be ready. Your feet fit it. With the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. I told him yesterday, you can't buy peace. You cannot buy. You can't go to Walmart and buy no peace. You can't go to CVS, Walgreens. You can't go to the doctor and get prescription for peace of mind. I will take peace of mind over money any day. I am not going to work at a job where there is no peace. Either I'm going to go in there and we're going to change the atmosphere. Something going to happen. We're going to shift it or something. And we're going to have a peaceful atmosphere. Or if it's always chaotic, I'm, Lord, I need you to, I need you to move, Lord. What do you need? I need some help. We have to be on purpose when we do stuff, guys. Stand firm. When you can't do nothing else but stand, keep standing. Keep standing. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor. We can't put on the breastplate and forget the shield. We can't put get the shield of faith and forget the helmet. Put on the full armor. God is saying we need to be fully covered. We need to be full. He's telling us like we need to be fully covered from head to toe because the weapons are going to form against us, but they will not prosper. 
Are you fully covered? Are you walking out here without your helmet? Are you walking out here without your breastplate? And then you wonder why life is happening to you. We ain't going to, listen, when they used to get ready for a fight back in there, they put on the Vaseline, they put on, put your hand in a ponytail. You was ready. You got on your sneakers. If you got on your sweatshirts and you got on whatever you got on, you ready to get, you ready for battle. Now you get older and you get, you know, you get a relationship with Christ, you get saved and you forget about the full armor. No, you really need the full armor now. You really need the full armor now. So don't go out here half naked without the proper armor, without the, the without your stuff on. Also, check your arsenal. Like, what do you have in your arsenal to fight back with? Like, yeah, we're going to stand. We're going to stand right here. We're going to stand firm. But what are we going to do while we're standing? Are we going to pray? Are we going to pull prayer out of the arsenal? Are we going to meditate? Are we going to listen to our music? What are we doing? What, what do we have in our arsenal? Do we have some natural, like our homegirls, that are really going to stand with us? Who we have in our circle? Like, when I'm going through, come on, Jesus, me and you. And sometimes I have to pull a few, a few of my homegirls in. I need y'all to be praying. I need to come over there. I need to sit with you. I need to hang out with you. Because right now I'm feeling a little weak. And I need, I need somebody to help me hold my arms up. Make sure you got the right people in your circle. If you go into a fight and you feel like you're going to get jumped, you ain't going to take the people that's going to watch. You're going to take the people that's going to jump in that fight with you. So the same thing as now that we're older and our belief system is different, you still need your homegirls. Who your homegirls or who your homeboys in your circle? What your arsenal look like? What weapons do you have in your arsenal that you have been equipping yourself with the entire time? When we're having good times in life, that don't mean put God to the side. That don't mean put prayer to the side. You still have to stay ready. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. <clears throat> if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. So the same mentality is like the same things that you need. If you take that analogy and switch it to the kingdom system rather than the world system, it still apply. You just switch partners. So now I'm not fighting I'm not fighting in the flesh. I ain't going to put on these sneakers. I ain't going to put on this sweatshirt. I ain't putting no Vaseline. I ain't putting this hand up on. I'm still going to fight though. But I'm going to fight using the kingdom system. I'm going to put on the full armor of God. Me and Jesus are going to get together. And we're going to win. We're going to win without having to lay a hand on anybody. I'm going to still get my homies. And instead, of we, instead of us getting my homies to go fight, we're going to fight in the spirit. I need y'all to pray. I need to come hang out with you because I'm feeling some type of way. And they may pray. We may just talk. We may listen to them. I don't know. But I'm still going to get my homies. But I'm fighting in the spirit. I'm not fighting in the flesh. That's why, we, that's why I don't get in fights no more. I don't get in fights. I don't, when I go hang out with my husband or with my homegirls or whatever, I ain't fighting nobody. I'm going to walk away from there just as nice and cute. The way I came in here is the way I'm leaving out of here because I ain't fighting nobody. And I don't put myself in situations like that. <clears throat> don't put yourself in situations like that. You know what's good, what's not, who's good, who's not. Don't put yourself in situations like that. So, today the goal is to help you be aware and beware of the, the, the enemy's tactics in the spirit. Not necessarily in the flesh all the time. So, what we want you to put on your supernatural eyes, your spiritual eyes, and realize that when stuff come up against you, it, it's, it's not personal to you. It's not really about you. It's about the plan that God has for you. It's about the purpose that he has for you. It's about what you're supposed to learn in that season. And the enemy is going to try to get you off. And he got to use people, things, stuff to get you off. So when it comes up against you, don't look at it with your natural eyes. Look at it and laugh like, here we go. Here we go, Jesus. Come on, what you want me to do? All right, we're going to stand. Jesus, I need you. I said, uh, last week, I would just tell all I could say was, Jesus, I don't know what to do. I, you know, I throw my hands up. That's what he wants us to do anyway. Surrender. I, I give up. I give up. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to do. I give up and I give it to you. And as I kept saying that, as I kept saying that, I felt like the burden was just being removed. Like, that's all I wanted you to do anyway. That's what I felt like I heard him say. That's what I wanted you to do anyway, Sharina. Just give up and give it to me. I want you to watch me work. 
for you. I want you to watch me fight the battle for you. I'm like, that's all I had to do the whole time. So now it's even easier. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do my part. But, Lord, I can't. I don't understand. I do not understand. And I need you to just take over. I give up. I surrender. I throw my hands up. I give it to you. And the peace just came. I'm like, wow. That's all I had to do. Some of us too prideful. We don't want to give up. Give up. Let him do it. Let Jesus do it. Let you, like, I give up, Lord. I give it to you. I give it all to you. What do you want me to do, Lord? And he can make that thing happen just as smooth, just as easy. While we out here struggling, fighting, trying to figure it out, fighting, having a mental battle with ourselves, just give up. Let him do it. Yeah, yeah, come on, y'all. But in order for you to understand, in order for you to work this thing, you have to make room and spend time with him so he can tell you what to do, how to do. He give us an instructional manual. What are we doing? So I don't want you to fight in the flesh anymore. It's tiring. It's tiring. Like even with the kids, they, they you know, they be weren't knock on the, the door closed. That means don't come. See, I have an open door policy. Then I have a crack door policy. And then I have a shut door policy. If my door is shut, that means leave me alone. You can knock or you can call, you can take. <clears throat> and I respond. But that means don't just come in my room. If I have a crack door policy, that means I'm chilling a little bit. I really don't want to be bothered, but I'm here for you. And then I have an open door policy. Come on in. The room is y'all's. Come on in, sit down, hang out, whatever we're going to do. So even when they be worrying you, are you like, my baby girl, that's, she her mama's baby. If anybody know her nature, she's her mama's baby. If I'm, if I'm, if the door shut, she comes running outside. If I'm, that's a, mm-hmm. and she don't like when I tell her no. But God has worked with me for about two weeks. Like you got that baby gonna worry you. That baby gonna keep worrying you if you keep letting her worry you. And I'm thinking, <clears throat> you know, as a mother, you're supposed to be there for your kids. You're supposed to be there when they want you to. And I said, they, they will worry you too. So I had to get a little stern, and she be like, I can't have it, or I can't. No, go somewhere and sit down. And she be looking at me side eye like, I know my mama. Yes, I did, because you ain't going to stress me out either. So then the enemy, no. I know how to get off. Make her baby, because when my baby gets sad, you know, mama all over. Uh-uh. It's just, she be having a moment. She'll be all right. Keep it moving. You ain't going to let nobody disrupt my peace. It's still a closed door policy right now. I'll see you when the door is open. <laughs> Y'all, we have, to, we have to listen. Don't let the enemy get you off. Don't let it, and then try to make you feel, try to make me feel like, Oh, you was a bad parent because you didn't let her come. No, I didn't. No, I'm a good parent because I didn't let her come in. I need a peace of mind. I'll get with her in a minute. She's going to be all right. So, no, don't let the enemy try to play you. Yeah, our struggle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. A lot of stuff starts in our mind, takes place in our mind first. So, when stuff happens, don't let it just sit in your mind. Do something. Say something. Find the word. Put the word on it. Find the scripture. Get with some of your homegirls. Pray about it. Talk about it. You have to do something. When you get a bad report, whether it's health, whether it's finances, whether it's at work, when you get a a bad report, you know what? The enemy is trying to. God got something great about to happen. You know what? Let me find a scripture to cover this. I give it to you, God. I surrender. I give up. I'm not fighting this thing in the flesh. I'm not fighting this. Yeah, yeah. We got to do something. So I want you to win in 2021. You know how to fight off the people in the flesh. You know how to, you know, call the bank, get your bank account fixed in the flesh. You know how to do all that stuff in the flesh. You know how to do that in the flesh. But just change your mindset and realize that it's not necessarily the flesh. The spirit. Fight in the spirit. We got to fight the things in the spirit that we don't see. We can't see with the natural eye. Like we know it's happening, but I'm like, I'm not fighting it. I give it to you, God. Make sure that you have on your full armor, though. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're prepared. You result and you react and you respond based on what you spend time with. Ask yourself, what are you spending time with? Are you spending time watching CNN? 
Are you spending time watching negative news? Are you spending time having conversations about the same negative stuff all the time with different people? What are you spending time with? What are you spending time with? When people bring you negative news, are you entertaining and engaging in the negative news? Or are you stopping them in their tracks and saying, come on, let's talk about it. Let's pray about it. Let me tell you a testimony about somebody else that this happened to. And let me tell you the outcome. Let's hold hope. Let's hold on to hope. Let's hold on to peace. Let's hold on to positivity. Are we engaging in the negative? Are, are we shifting people's perspective? Are we changing atmospheres and environments for people to have hope and believe? Like I've he- heard, t- I know too much about them. I've seen them do it. We've all seen them do it. We know that he can do it. We speak it, but then we speak negative against what we talking about you can't pray by yourself and then go talk negative on the phone about the same situation and expect things to change when people come around you and they're talking crazy and they're talking negative stop them in the tracks this is your life that they're talking about these are your children that they're talking about this is your future that they're talking about don't let them speak that to you like people already know "Mm -mm, i ain't even about to call sharina she ain't trying to hear it. You already know. And I don't mind. My, my husband even be getting mad sometimes. Like, it's a real situation. I know it's a real situation. God is real too, though. And I ain't even trying to, I ain't even trying to hear that right now. So, you know, these are the, these are the facts. These are what the people say. These are the facts. But I'm, I believe what God said. So, yeah, let's deal with it. Okay, we deal with it. We can't in the natural. We give it to God. I'm not going to keep dwelling on it. Stop dwelling on what the people say. Don't dwell on what the people say. Sometimes it's their job to do that. Like this is their this is their job. And you know, thank you for your job. But I believe what the word says. I believe what God says. And I know that He worked miracles. I know that He's done it before. I've seen people that He's done it for. Like, what report are you gonna believe? And if you get by yourself and you feel like you're alone and it it overtakes you when you're by yourself, try not to be by yourself. Surround yourself by those good people. Cut you some good music on. Write in your journal. Read. Talk to you. Do do what you need to do. Look in the mirror and talk to yourself. But you have to do something. You have to say something. You can't just keep allowing the enemy to beat you down in the spirit. Keep allowing the enemy to beat you down mentally. Get up, get dressed, get cute, walk around. I get, even on days that I don't have nothing to do, I get up and get cute on purpose. I like to feel good about me. I like to walk around looking pretty. Like, I'm not going to put on makeup, and I'm I'm not going to put on a, you know, a whole outfit, but I'm going to have my cute lounge clothes. I'm going to have on some earrings, some lip gloss. I'm going to be decent because I like to feel good about me. Get up, do something. Clean up. Go outside. Walk around. Do something. Don't just lay and waddle in what the fact, what it looks like. What are you expecting the outcome to be? Start acting that way. Whatever the bad report is or whatever the situation is, act the opposite. If you if your bank account looks like you don't have nothing, act the opposite. Act the opposite. Speak to that bank account. Oh, I got I'm good. God is in my source. Find the scripture. Stand on that. If they gave you a bad report and you just want to waddle and lay in it, act the opposite. Get up. Do something. Walk around. Get cute. Take pictures. Make the enemy out a liar. Make the enemy out of lying. You know you're giving your best at your job. You know you're giving your best. And they act like you ain't doing the, you ain't doing nothing. Act the opposite. Start walking around like I own this. This is my business and I'm going to treat it as such. Shift your perspective. Renew your mind. 
Renew your mind. Shift your perspective. Change atmospheres when you walk in a place. They should be able to smell the sweet aroma of the anointing oil when you come in the room. The light should be shining when you come in the room. When you open your mouth to speak, it, it should be like music when you show up. Shift the atmosphere. But make sure you have on the full armor of God when you walk outside that door. Before you leave home, make sure you have on the full armor of God. Check your arsenal. Make sure you strap, you ready, you tight. Spend time with God before you face the world. So that you can be ready. Be ready. Stay ready. Stay equipped so you don't have to get ready. If you have not prayed, if you have not spent time with God and all these things come up against you, you're going to react in the flesh. You're going to react out of fear. You have to make a decision that my life will never be the same again. As I take flight 2021, I am prepared. I left the baggage in 2020. I'm on a safe flight. I am ready to fly because we, we're taking jets in 2022. We don't want to take the same flight over and over and over again. We keep going through the same cycles, getting the same results. When we're supposed to be going through transformational seasons, learning lessons along the way so that we can walk in our purpose. A lot of us are focused on our purpose. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? What is my purpose? We're so concerned about our purpose that we're missing the fact that we're supposed to be learning a lesson in this season. A season. We have seasons, y'all. What are you learning in that season? What lesson are you learning in that season? We're so focused on our purpose, our purpose. Our, we all have a purpose. One of the things we definitely need to do is be a servant. Be willing to serve somebody else. Impact somebody else's life. But we can't be so caught up in our focus and our purpose and our plans and our goals that we're not learning a lesson in every transformational season that we go through. And if you're not equipped for the seasons, then you're going to keep going through the same cycles. And you're going to be on the same flight next year, doing the same thing that you did last year and this year. So I need you to go back and listen to the podcast on YouTube about preparing for 2021, not leaving nobody behind in 2021, flipping your bag in 2021, making sure you're prioritizing your life, prioritizing your money, and get ready, y'all. Get ready. Change your mentality. Open your heart and be ready to receive. Renew your mind. Shift your perspective. And stop fighting in the flesh. Stop fighting in the natural. The enemy is not after the flesh. The enemy is after your mind. The enemy is after you in the spirit. But if you don't know how to fight in the spirit, you're going to always lose. So when people come up against you, don't even pay attention to the flesh. It's the spirit behind the flesh trying to get you off. When your bank account look crazy, don't even pay attention to the bank account. Speak to your bank account. Yeah, it look crazy right now, but I am in between blessings and I'm waiting on my manifestation. We are never broke because God is our source and our resource. Stop fighting in the flesh. Stop giving away your peace, your joy, and your happiness. God gave that to you so nobody can take it from you. If you don't have peace, joy, and happiness, that's because you gave it away. So now you're in bondage to whoever or whatever you gave your peace, joy, and happiness to. So you're the reason that you have no peace. You're the reason you have no happiness. You're the reason you have no joy. You gave it away. Did you give it away to the bad report? Did you give it away to that man, to that woman? Who has your peace? I challenge you to go back and get your peace. Get your peace. Money can't buy peace. God gave you that. Stop letting people take it. Stop giving it away. It was a gift. It was a gift. It was a gift and you gave your gift away. So be prepared. Be aware, be ready, stay ready so you don't have to get ready and stop fighting in the flesh. Spend time with your spirit man so that you won't react in fear, but you will respond by using faith. 
Thank you, Father God, for being with us this morning. Thank you for passing through here, Lord God. Thank you for helping us along the way. Lord, we know we need you. We surrender to you. We give up. We give it to you. We are nothing without you. We make room for you. We spend time with you, Lord God. Thank you for helping us to be knowledgeable, helping us to be better, helping us to apply the knowledge and use wisdom in these situations, Lord God. I pray and I eradicate right now, Lord God, same cycles. We will not continue to go through the same cycles. But we will learn lessons in every transformational season that we go through, Lord God. So that we can help somebody else. So that we can impact the masses, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us when we couldn't keep ourselves. When we didn't know who you were, Lord God, we thank you for being alongside us. For never leaving us, never forsaking us, for meeting us right where we are, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord God, that we are not so spiritual deep, that we're no earthly good, Lord God. That we go out and help somebody else on purpose. That we go outside of our homes expecting, expecting to be a blessing to somebody. Expecting for somebody to be a blessing to us. Just being watchful, being watchful. Lord, I pray right now that we no longer fight in the flesh, but we fight in the spirit. Lord God, I pray right now that everybody that's under my voice right now, that we take our peace back, that we take our joy and our happiness back, Lord God. You gave that to us and it belongs to us. We thank you, Lord God. We appreciate you for being our source and our resource, that we, have to, we don't have to depend on anything or anybody, Lord God. I pray for shifted mindsets, shifted perspectives, Lord God, that when we walk into a room that we change atmospheres, that we change the environment, that we are the light that shines bright in dark places, that we are the sweet aroma of anointing that walks in the place and changes everything about it, Lord God. I thank you for a strong mindset, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that when there's spiritual warfare, we know that we can call on the name of Jesus. Thank you for keeping us in our right minds. We love you, Lord. I pray for a deeper, stronger relationship, Lord God, so that we can go out here and do your work, Lord God. It's not about our plan. It's not about our goals. It's not about our dreams, Lord God. What will you have us to do? Use us as healthy vessels on this side of heaven for your glory. We will impact the masses together. We will be servant leaders together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. We love you. We honor you. And we're excited that you stopped by this morning. Let's say yes, y'all. Keep saying yes to him. Yes to his will. Yes to his way. Put your will to the side. Put your plan to the side and just make room for him. Spend time with him. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for jumping on this morning. The podcast party, the podcast party is here to help us be better. Again, at the podcast party, you're going to get the bread of life. You're going to get the living water. There's enough seats for everybody, and we have the best pilot on this flight. We have the best pilot on this flight. Thank y'all for jumping on the podcast party. I am Sharina Titwell Watson. I am your empowerment producer. My job is to push you past your pain, push you past your problems, push you through the process, help you learn to love unconditionally, and help you fulfill the purpose that God has for you because he anointed you to be an impact to the masses. Make sure that you share and that you tell somebody somewhere.